Welcome to the Simon Parks Connecting Consciousness Show on Wolf Spirit Radio. Simon actively encourages you to post your questions live to him in the chat room at wolfspiritradio.com forward slash listen. When you ask a question in the chat room, please make sure that you've logged into the chat and go. That's the set name at the bottom. Uh, that you have a nickname and that uh, you ask one question in all caps. That makes it easiest for us to uh, collate. Thank you. The next two hours will be full of debate, interview guests and up-to-date news. Please join Simon and play an active role. Connecting Consciousness Show. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, uh, wherever you are on the planet. This is Wolf Spirit Radio, and uh, this is the Connecting Consciousness... Try again. This is the Connect... Simon, Simon, you're supposed to be dyslexic. Why have you got such a difficult to pronounce? Connecting Consciousness Show. <laughs> you whined. <laughs> what a wonderful introduction. Hello, JP. I'm happy I'm a- to speak to you. <laughs> Oh dear! Well, I you know tripped tripped over the the uh, the intro once again. One day I'll I'll just do it smooth. Maybe I should write it down. Why don't you go on a holiday? Yeah, I think I need a break. I think I need a break. Let's let's manifest a break for me, shall we? <laughs> no, I've already done that. Um, yeah, so uh, I will actually be away in two weeks' time uh, for this show, um, but it will be ably, more than ably, covered by Colleen Kelly. Uh, uh, Haggy Shack Radio herself. Um, right, okay, so people are trying to call in to the studio, and we're not going to answer your calls. Uh, if you want to listen to the show, you have to call in on this number, which is 712-432-9588. That's 712-432-9588. That's for people who listen to the radio in the United States, um, and that will get you to um uh, you'll be able to hear this conversation live on the air so simon how are you it's been two weeks you've had a break what did you do did you break anything huh first of all <clears throat> i want to thank win keach for uh taking my slot yeah was, it was brilliant that went well didn't it so that was really good um i don't think i can remember a time as busy on this planet as the last few weeks have been. Mm. As you've been saying. Uh, yes. Um, I mean, personally as well. Um, for those who, who are perhaps not fully aware, obviously I've been uh, trying to push out information regarding uh, the latest situations occurring for the United States and in Germany. And I did a, uh, an interview with Kerry Cassidy, I think on Thursday night, and uh, it was, I thought it was just going to be sort of twenty minutes or so. But Kerry's a really good interviewer and, <laughs> and knows her stuff. So we were nearly pushing the hour and a half, and uh, there was a, a really loud knock on my office door here, on my my room's door. It was <laughs> really loud, and I heard male voices outside. So I thought, oh, what the hell's this? So I quickly just turned off the. Um, uh, Skype and there were two police officers uh, and uh, they're very genuine and they said um, we've had a call that it, uh, you, you're in trouble so I said well, well what do you mean you've had a call I'm in trouble and they said well we've, we've had a tip off that you're in danger so we've sort of come round very quickly so I said well you know <laughs> who's phoning you up thinking it's some sort of joke and he said oh no 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 this doesn't come from a member of the public this has come from somewhere else, and we've just come to make sure that everything is all right. So he said, do you mind if I look, you know, we look around the house to make sure there's nobody sort of, you know, sort of hiding, you know, are you under duress or anything like that? And I said, no, not at all. So they left, and I thought, well, um, it's probably be a good idea just to vacate the house for a little bit and um, just, you know, um, seek alternative accommodation for a couple of days, which I did. 
um, but I had uh, people from Connecting Consciousness over, so you know, I had to try and keep in touch with them and try to make some meetings. Uh, it wasn't very easy, but did it. Uh, I think, it, looking back at the show, what caused some harm was I talked about Hillary Clinton and I talked about have her having a clone and um, the, the the interviewer uh, Kerry, she, she was aware of this and I said well perhaps I can offer you some more news and it's in relation to the soul that would need to come out of uh, Hillary Clinton and be placed into the clone now I think that based with um, some of the very good questions that um, the, the, that Kerry was asking around the situation in America, around the situation in Germany, was probably just a little bit too much for somebody. And as as we've always said, at the top of the pyramid, you can divide it into two groups: those which or who are supportive and beneficial to humanity and those which quite frankly are complete nut jobs absolutely off their trolley as we say here in great britain and i think that somebody who was completely around the twist decided that they'd had enough of me and was going to do something then the good side uh, heard about that and the fastest way to respond of course is to send a couple of policemen around because they can come around here in about two minutes because the police station's only around the corner so I think that that's what was going on there. I think that the benevolent side picked up that the negative side um, were very angry with what I was saying and they immediately wanted to make a statement because the police officers who came to the house were very genuine and, and they had no knowledge of anything, just that they'd had this very reliable piece of information and they were told to get around here very quickly. So um, that's what happened and I know that it's been a concern for some people who are listening to the show and then suddenly, of course, it goes quiet and then I'm coming back on and telling them what's happened. And people have said that they very clearly heard a very loud knock on my door. I mean, that quite surprised me because nobody knocks uh, on their door and if, if anyone does, it's never like that. So that was, that was something. Um, so I want to thank everybody for their their concern, their love, um, and their support. And if you possibly remember, just before I went on my holiday, which has just sank into oblivion, I can't even remember my holiday <laughs> yeah, except right. going to the seaside. Um, I did say that I was going to thank people who have made donations, and and that's true. I'm going to be emailing people to thank them. But what I'm going to do, uh, it's a bit naughty, but I don't care. I'm going to thank. 10 people and I'm going to do it every radio show. I'm not going to give the full names because I need to thank people who have supported me um, by sending donations um, because without your donations quite frankly I couldn't do what I do. So I want to thank Daniel Rodney, Derek Candice Alan, DJ Elisa, Chris Jennifer and Juliet So those are 10 people who have very kindly donated I will be emailing to say thank you and next radio show I'll do another 10 if because <laughs> there are quite a few back and I need to cover it all so thank you everybody um, it's very difficult when you put yourself out as I do um, and I'm not going to um, be scared I'm not going to hide I'm not, I'm not going to do anything stupid like say here you know chop my head off but I'm not going to run away I will keep on doing what I'm doing uh, clearly it's upsetting some people uh, but the good always outweighs the bad so um, I'm not disappearing I'm going to keep on doing the show as long as people like you JP are prepared to get the, the truth out and interview lots of good people like Wynne and like many others uh, we have a fighting chance to counterbalance all of the lies and deception that comes out so um that's really what i wanted to say so yeah thanks to everyone and uh yes i did have a holiday it was really lovely uh, the weather was great <clears throat> i went to the seaside um 
and I'm glad I went when I did. I always knew that it was going to be busy now, so I took the break when I felt it could. And I've always thought October was going to be stressful, and, and people who are regular listeners to the show know that I and others have said October. I, I think I was wrong. I think it's earlier. It started. I was about four weeks um, out of date there. It started sort of back end of August, beginning of September. But you know what? I don't think four weeks is, is too bad a target to miss. You know, out. Simon, it, it feels a bit like this holiday that I'm going to be doing, much like it's probably going to be a bit of a busman's holiday um, because I'm going to li- the place where the Lyrans landed and I'm sure there's going to be some interesting adventures going on there. Oh, um, you're going to enjoy it. Yeah. So uh, it's it's going to be, uh, you know, I know that there's going to be challenges involved and, and uh, it's an adventure and I'm looking forward to it because I haven't been out of the house for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> before, you know, we start, before we start the show, please. I just want to um, say that for people in, in uh, UK or particularly in the Midlands, um, I've been asked to uh, speak at a, a conference. Yeah, exactly. It's the first time this group have put a conference on and I really wanted to support them. Uh, I'm just going to give it a plug, actually. Uh, it's on Saturday, the 17th of September. It's the All Saints Centre, number two, Vicarage Road, Kings Heath, Birmingham. And the postcode is B147RA. It's just on for the one day, the Saturday. I'm speaking in the afternoon. Tickets are only £10, so get there in the morning. Um, have a look round, and hopefully I get a chance to, to have a chat with you all. So... I want to support this conference because the people putting it on, it's their very first one, and I want it to be successful. All right, that's it. Let's get on with the good, questions, good. Then, JP. Good, good. Uh, I, you're interested in doing uh, small conferences more than large conferences because you know, people can actually meet you. Now, sure, just let all the police cars go by. Hopefully yeah, they yeah, won't yeah. stop here. <laughs> oh, by the, by the way, I have a jingle for you. Listen to this one. This, oh, you'll no. like this one. Yeah, you know, you'll like this one. You remember this one? Um, it's it was the top of the pops. It was the uh, the countdown to the the number one pop song back in the sixties uh, and seventies when I yes, was listening to Alan was Freeman. 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 Yes, that's right. And wasn't that on the, at Sunday at six o'clock? Yeah, yeah. Or, or was it was it Saturday or Sunday? I can't remember. Mm. Maybe maybe Sunday. Uh, it was definitely it was the chart show, and it was so. Well, the good news is all the police cars are going by and not stopping. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it's like they're chasing someone. Um, right. I'll, I, <laughs> Go ahead. I'll do. Just conferences. I don't care if there are ten people there, or 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 or, or two hundred. I will always make time mm. to try to talk to people. So yes, of course, and and where it's like a very small conference. Then you know um, I'll, I'll put the chairs out. Literally, I, 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 I want to support things like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, do do you have a car, or do you uh, do you take public transport um, to get? I mean, say you wanted. Okay, say we wanted to bring you up here. I'm going to just stop because the police cars pulled right up outside. The doors are wide open. Two policemen are running this way, and the sirens just going on and on. <laughs> All right, All right. Uh, you so leave I the just... camera. So um... <laughs> Simon's just going to check what's going on. This should be fun. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe I should put a bit of... Uh... Yeah, so by the way, while we're, while we're listening to the police sirens outside Simon's house, um, the, uh, this is a... a, a um... Yeah, uh, if you uh, want to ask a question, uh, people are posting questions in the chat room. Um, you could actually go to wolfspiritradio.com forward slash listen and there is a link that says ask question right at the top of the, of the, uh, of the page. Just, just beneath the word, uh, word where it says ready to learn the truth. Just below that it says ask question. You click that and then it will go into a, a nice ordered list that I can ask Simon nice and, uh, sequentially. So there's no randomness and, uh, there's no contention. Which is the big problem. So, yes, and, uh, where are we? What else have we got? Um, I hope that's Simon coming back. <laughs> this is quite good. 
Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, su- yeah, uh, uh, Colleen's suggesting that uh, Simon has a stash of donuts that is uh, drawing them there like magnets. So, um, let's see. It's all very, uh, can we hear anything? Well, well, very interesting. Maybe I'll put a little piece of music on. Um, here is where is it? I have the. All uh, oh, right, oh, I was going to play that later. Um, there's a song that I wanted to play. Oh look, here's here's a nice little thing. This is uh, my version of the Nocien. Okay, we're back. Um, that was my version of the Nossian while uh, while we were listening. So, Simon, <sighs> nice breath. Right, um, very interesting. Uh, right outside the back door, almost is sort of the the back door leads to a, a lane, which leads onto a road, and uh, a car has been rammed by a police van deliberately right outside the back door, as it were, and three other police vans were rammed into it, sandwiched it. And then they were fighting with a guy probably about 30 feet from my door. So, <laughs> Oh, my <maybe> God. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. So I knew right, it was so on. You want to take your breath for a minute? And, no, and, it's fine. Yeah. Um, it's just a physical thing. Yeah. The soul is fine. Uh, it was a uh, siren was going, you see, and you yeah. know. <laughs> I heard the, it's it's like, coffee. got closer and closer. And, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's when the... the the doors of the, the police vehicle open and the, the cops jump out and the siren's still left going. So I knew that was really odd because it's right outside and the siren's just going and going. Um, so they're fighting with this person just as literally just oh 30 God. feet from, from my door. Um, and as I say, they've, they've rammed it right off the road. Um, and this could be absolutely nothing, absolute coincidence, or it could be something following on from when those police officers um, turned up on Thursday night to say, am I all right? Anyway. I, w- I wonder if it's a black ops operative that they've just made a big to-do arresting. That would be funny, wouldn't it? I don't know, but... It would be yeah. very... Uh, what was that, Jason Bourne? But uh, they'd all be dead by now. <laughs> anyway. <yeah. laughs> the thing is that, like <laughs> you I was just saying before we got interrupted, that you know, it, 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 you can't live in fear, but you have to be aware of what's happening. It's very important. Um, you know, so there we go. That's it. Let's crack on. Let's yep. have some questions. <laughs> Says, where do you live, the Bronx? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. It feels like that. You know, this this place has got the lowest crime rate till I lived here. <laughs> till you moved in. There goes the neighbourhood. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's go to the nice calm, safe database of questions where questions are rolling in perfectly in, in time. So, our first question from Silver Lightning. There we go. Silver Lightning. Parallel existence in the AI. Oh, nice chewy question to start with. Hello, Simon. Is there any reason that you may be aware of as to why sleeplessness or sleeping disorders like insomnia are on the rise? Do we visit the lives of our other selves in parallel universes? Could negative entities or AI be interfering to cause this kind of disruption if this were the case? Light, love and blessings to you both and JP, especially for the enlightenment of work for you that you give. Thank you. Thank you for the support. Um, uh, Unfortunately, it's quite a lot to do with um, frequencies being used while people are sleeping uh, in order to give people controlled dreams or give them messages that they will try and enact during the day and, <clears throat> you know there was a quite a big thing with the early research in the, the late Victorian I think it was around about the time of the First World War where they worked out that moonlight at the full moon had a profound effect on some people and that a lot of instances of sleepwalking for instance occurred on the times of a full moon and if you got a very thick, heavy curtains, uh, that reduced it. But what we are seeing, and the questioner, I believe, is exactly accurate, we're seeing a lot of people having disturbed sleep or waking up and feeling that something isn't quite right. And I know for a fact that um, it's not psychic attack, it's more like a a, a machine, it's an energy type of machine that is being used, which 
um, rides in on those brain waves when we're sleeping and can uh, influence the mind. Now, it's only the, the conscious mind, interestingly enough, because you, your self-conscious or your higher self will detect that something's not right. So there is a, I use the word loosely, there's a war going on on this planet for the hearts and minds of people. And uh, one of the ways, of course, to do that is to get people when they're sleeping to try and influence them with um, these waves. So, yes, there is a lot of it happening. It is increasing. Um, and if somebody feels that they are um, being attacked like that, then they need to seek a bit of help. Thank you. So, next question is from Christian92 Romania. Hello, Simon. If Source created everything, then what or who created Source? How can it come <laughs> into existence out of nothingness? Good question. One of these self, uh, what's that, um, uh, recursive questions. Right. Because, you know, who created the thing that created the thing that created the thing? Well, I think for as long as I can remember on this planet and this lifetime, even as a, a five or six year old, uh, the question of who, who made God or what was there before nothing. And it's a question that I think man and woman has been asking on this planet for a very long time. And I think that's the way it should be because the overall divine creator, uh, will always be different from us. We'll always have something that we don't have to that extent. And we can't know everything. Maybe pure consciousness can create itself. Maybe something is so important that it is so locked in with the concept of time or the creational force or the role it has to play that it just happens because it has to happen because if it doesn't, there is no life. There is no method to evolve um, to look back on your life, to learn from mistakes and to go forward. So there had to be something like that. Uh, I don't know whether, you know, you could say, well, there was another creator on top of that one and another creator on top of that. I just think that consciousness makes a decision to do something. And when it's not there, that's because the way we would measure it we wouldn't understand it, but it doesn't mean it wasn't there. It could well have been there, but in a different form. It wasn't so obvious. So that's my best guess, and it will always be a guess because um, I, I'll never uh, rub shoes or, 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 or take tea with something as powerful and as great as that. And I think it's right that we really don't have the answer. Thank you. So, mm hmm, aha, aha, right. Okay, from Flora. Uh, good day, uh, I'm sorry, SB and Simon says, uh, JB. So, uh, question for some. You have mentioned to avoid the trap of going to the light when our body spirit leaves this world to turn around and go the other way. To date, I have not heard anyone else mention this. Why do others not warn us of the trap that keeps us returning to the manipulating powers and energies that exist here? That being said, with all the changes happening, is this no longer a concern? Thank you in advance. And thank you for all you're doing. Um well, thank you. Uh, is the person from Australia? Because they said good day. Uh, yeah, Flora, I don't know, BMTS dot com, don't know. Mm. Okay, just a, it's a little observation, my dear Watson. Um, well, I'm not the only person. Uh, I'm sure there are other people who, through wherever they're getting their information from, will have hit upon that and done their best to to take the truth out there because. When you have something that's that's truth like that, lots of people will get it. The question is whether people feel confident enough or strong enough to go out there and share that piece of truth. Um, unfortunately, it's still a trap. It's still operating, although it's reduced in its operation. It's like the grid. The grid is still there. I don't care if people say to me the grid's gone. No, it hasn't. But there are holes in it. There are big holes in that grid. The light... Uh, it's probably working intermittently, but it's still a soul trap. Um, if you think that uh, that the establishment wish to maintain the status quo, therefore it's in their interest to make sure that big, big players like Walt Disney, uh, Warner Brothers, uh, try to um, mix in within their children's stories or their adult stories some form of a death scene, 
or a near-death scene where there's a shining light and then somebody like an angel comes through and then guides you into the promised land. And that's been something that's been hit through time and time again because it's part of mind control. It's it's If you get somebody in their physical body to accept something, then they create that with their own reality. So when their physical body does stop working and their soul is ready to leave and find another body, um, it's already been half-programmed to accept this guiding spirit that's arrived to take to take them onto the promised land. But of course it isn't. It's a program on a computer like the Matrix, and it is just running its program. It just collects souls, takes them up to the trap, and then goes back and gets the next one. So in, to answer your question, I'm not the only person to have given this warning, but uh, lots of people don't like quite understandably and we've had something tonight and we've had it on Thursday night to explain why very few people are prepared to to go out and you know say things because there is always a reaction to that you know and you know you, you have to balance that off um, but yes it's still operating we haven't won yet thank you for your question from Druid Star in Ireland Simon, would it be possible that we are going through 4D at present? There seem to be a lot of suicide, especially here in Ireland. I don't want to sound insensitive, but could this be down to the 4D frequency and vibrations and people not being able to deal with the new vibrations? Yes, I've been trying to get a Skype session. Is it really busy? Emojis all the time. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, two questions. One... Do you, want, do you want to first cover the, the, the maintenance question of getting the session with Simon? Obviously, you, you just like, you must be manically busy right now. Like, a lot um, of things and not having much time to do sessions. I think, I think, I think the, the, the thing is that I, I've always, perhaps not very successfully, I've always tried to look at what was the most important. Not what's most important for me, but I came to this planet to do a job. Many of us did. Some of us are better at doing it than others. Um, and my job is to, I believe, is to get the information out and to survive <laughs> um, and to, to, to do what I can. So I love helping people on a one-to-one -one basis, but sometimes that has to take a back seat because I need to get the message out to a large number of people, sometimes very quickly. Uh, I, I, I get the most awful attacks on websites. Um, and people sometimes will do radio shows and say that I'm talking nonsense or rubbish. Uh, and I'm not lying to anyone if I say that we were within four days of, of World, War, World War III. We were within four days of World War III. And then all the energies changed. Now, I knew we weren't going to have a world war. But the fact is there are people out there who are hell-bent on pushing a certain agenda. So when that sort of spikes up, then, you know, I, I am somewhat uh, taken up with that. But, um, I am really sorry that you haven't had a chance to have a Skype with me. Uh, all I can say to you is I have given the email address out on the radio show uh, in the past. If you would like to email again, and I will do my very best to, to pick that up. So, right, that, that's the housekeeping question. I've completely forgotten what the other question was now. Help me right, out. I know, I know. That's why I, I let you sort of <laughs> address that, and then we'll go back to it. That's fine. Um, and he's talking about the uh, going through 4D and the lot oh, of yes. suicides. Okay, right. That was a good question, actually. Yeah, that yeah. So these are good, good, you know, these are good questions, and you know, I want to. I, I know you can only handle one thing at a time. I know yeah, because right. I'm the same. I'm a man. I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're men. You know, we only do these one thing. Let's focus on this thing, and then focus on the next thing. Yeah, so no, I, I actually, I appreciate you doing that because. You know, sometimes people ask me five or six questions rolled up into one, and then my eyes just go up to the ceiling, and they learn. They it learn. is a dyslexic thing, apparently. It is, absolutely. Um, and I just can't do that. My son, apparently, has a, he has got the spelling dyslexia. I can spell brilliantly. In fact, I'm better at spelling than most people. Um, and uh, But um, the thing about li remembering a list of <laughs> things to do, my my ex-wife used to bark all these, uh, you know, go and get this, 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 and this, and like I'd come back with the last thing, and like, what did you say the first thing? So I, I think, really I relate think, to that. I, I, I do want to get on to the question, yeah. but I'll say something <laughs> funny. Um, 
there are, there are people who know me very well, and um, they'll they'll say to me, oh, you know, you know, um, oh, what what time did you get to the shops today, or what time did you do this? And I'll say, oh, you know, oh, I got two thirty, you know, and they'll say, well, how did you manage that? It's only twelve noon now. So I, I have no concept of time, as many people have, and I don't know whether that's just because I'm what I am or because of the dyslexia. Right, but it's, it's a great source of amusement for many people, um, and it's, it's a bit frustrating for me. Right, it's, 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 it's probably a little endearing, and uh, it's, it's like, you know... I don't know endearing. I remember once um, um, I used to work for local authorities, uh, and um, not as a politician but as a, an officer, and I am as a manager, and people would say to me, have you got the file for Mr. X or Mr. Y? Now, in my brain, I would say, yes, it's in the filing cabinet over by the door. But somewhere between me accessing the answer, yes, it's in the filing cabinet over by the door, it would come out as, oh, it's in the wardrobe. That's a closet for our American friends. Oh, it's in the wardrobe. So I get mixed up where I'll go and um, vacuum clean the grass when I mean I'm going to mow the grass. It's stuff like that which is annoying. Here's the answer to the question. Um, there are an increase in suicides at the moment. There's also an increase in what the doctors would call mental health. It's not. It's to do with uh, a splitting and a, a choice. Many, many people on this planet are having to make a choice. They don't understand, you know, those who are not aware and awake, they don't understand that their soul is <clears throat> trying to force the issue to make a choice. <clears throat> Excuse me. But what, what is happening is that as we, uh, as the planet energetically advances, could use the word evolve, as it, as it moves towards its, its desired position, so its goal is to take as many of its people, its creatures that live on the surface of the planet with it. Now, if you have a consciousness and the ability to know right from wrong, then you are going to have to make a choice. If you're a domestic cat or a domestic dog, you are not tasked with um, having to make a decision for right or wrong. You will still evolve, but you are not being tested in the same way. So we need to look at, at human beings and understand that for many people um, who are like ourselves and like the listeners to, to our show, uh, are deeply frustrated and upset because they live one principal life and yet the rules and the laws of the uh, society around them is totally different from them. And many people actually sadly take their own life, uh, not because they're necessarily because their boyfriends left them or their girlfriends left them, but they just have a sense of hopelessness that they that they just cannot connect with the world around them, and that's dreadful, and that's that's because society is wrong, and we need to change it. Um, there are people who have what, what a doctor would call mental issues, but I think that the increasing stress and strain of seeing the truth of the world around us and the lies that we're on, <clears throat> and for many people who feel trapped and imprisoned and don't know, you know, how how to get out of it or where to turn. However, the final point is the one that the questioner is asking. I know for a fact that those people who are psychic, spiritual, are getting glimpses of another dimension. <clears throat> Some people have seen more than one dimension. And if your uh, energy body is moving towards that way, but your consciousness is not accepting it, uh, or is lagging behind, then you are in effect um, dividing yourself between the world of um, the other dimension and yours. The fourth dimension contains more bad guys than good guys. But this planet and the rules and the laws around it were modelled on the fourth dimension. And that's because many of the <clears throat> uh, negative ruling elite were based in the fourth dimension. So they conspired to create a network of fourth dimensional energy, which we call rules and laws and um, uh, ceremony and ritual. And that energy uh, now is beginning to come under huge pressure, not just from outside, but from the human desire to break free. 
we don't need to stay in the fourth dimension. This planet <clears throat> will move through the fourth relatively quickly into the fifth. We don't need to learn. We we don't need to learn from the fourth dimension because our planet here, although technically third dimensional, the rules and the laws are fourth dimension, and we've already experienced them and hopefully uh, learnt from them and rejected many of them. So we've got nothing to gain from hopping into the fourth, staying there a million years or so, and then hopping to the fifth. Uh, I don't believe we will miss out the fourth and go to the fifth, as many people in the new age say i suppose i'm fairly pedantic and quite particular we will move through the fourth and indeed we are beginning to do so now so we will traverse the fourth dimension but we won't stop because we have no need to stop uh, are people having experiences with fourth dimensional en entities now much more than they were yes because the barrier between our world and the fourth dimension is wafer thin now. Uh, the bewitching hour was never midnight. The bewitching hour was always half past two in the morning, because at half past two in the morning, our time, that's in Britain, the barrier between the third and the fourth dimension is at its thinnest. Well, now we're actually breaking through that membrane, that bubble. And so people are experiencing a lot of conflicting energies so the questioner is absolutely correct thank you for your question and a great answer very good uh, um, no that's a question about somebody else I, I want to try and avoid questions about somebody else's stuff what do you think of somebody else's stuff so I'm not going to say it right so stop asking it <laughs> right um, here you go uh, this is from Claudia. Uh, dear Simon and PJ, <laughs> for a, it's JP. For a view, for a few times now, I've encountered these entities that look like men in black, but are not human at all. They have this awkward mouth that they can open, and it reminds me of the movie Alien. What are they, and how do you protect yourself from them? Right, <clears throat> I think you've hit the nail on the head. <clears throat> not with the alien. Um, uh, there are two sorts of men in black but can I just put the record straight because it's such a bloody um, sexist society we live in there are women in black and <laughs> I've seemed to be about wah, wah. The, the only person but you know there are not many of us who who have actually seen women in black and why why is it that we would just assume that they would only have males um, the term men in black <clears throat> is a term given I think may go right back to the 1950s. I'm not sure on that. That's not the term I know them as. The term that they, they have, their official term, they have an official term, is enforcement. They are enforcers. So that is their, their title. There are two sorts of enforcers. There's a human, or a human-stroke hybrid, who is incredibly psychic and with very gifted... And then there's the completely non-human type um, who is totally alien. And the best way to describe this individual, the alien one, uh, would be too big for his uniform. In other words, there was a uh, the, 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 this Michelin man, the advert for the guy who you know, was selling tyres back in the 60s and 70s or maybe earlier. But it's if you can imagine a, a big, big uh, fat person with clothes on that are too tight and looks ridiculous. Uh, these alien creatures uh, are, and I still don't understand why they use them, but they seem to be immune to most forms of attack, so perhaps that's why they use them. So they tend to be more like a zombie-type character. The ones that we're, uh, or many targeted individuals, are familiar with or contactees who 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 have seen things. Uh, these are human stroke human hybrids, and the reason they wear sunglasses uh, is not because they don't want to be identified. It's because because they are psychic. If the glasses come off, then you would see that their eyes were um, not reptilian. They'd have human eyes, but they would have the ability to hypnotise you, and they don't want people to have an idea of what their power is. So the reason they wear sunglasses generally is because they have the power with the 
hybrids, it's because their eyes are very almond shape. And again, they don't want people to, to see that they're different. The um, traditional uh, 1950s, 60s clothes that these creatures wear, or these people wear, it is uh, an in-joke. You know, it's an in-joke. It's their uniform. That's what they do. They they were created and started to become active around the time of the 1950s. We're talking about Eisenhower and many other presidents who were playing a game um, with the aliens trying to buy time so that technology could be back-engineered so that uh, the human race would have some form of defence. And so uh, there was an arrangement and agreements made between the American government and the uh, men in black were part of that agreement. So they would come into the military base, they would follow certain peoples. Uh, if you are, um, if you believe you are being followed by uh, certain vehicles uh, or these people, your targeted individual, I've just said to, to the other guy, send me an email and I'll go through it. If you'd like to send me an email and then I'll go through and try and pick that one up because I don't particularly like uh, the a- actions of the men in black. Um, uh, the women in black dress exactly like the men. They have what the Americans would call black pants, uh, black shoes, a tight black top. They're all quite thin. They're not stick-like, but they're quite slim. Their hair, actually, interestingly enough, is either blonde or black, the ones I've seen. They do wear sunglasses, and they sometimes wear little leather, what look like leather, little jackets, black jackets, sometimes buttoned up, sometimes not. So they have their own uniform, uh, and it makes perfect sense to have feminine energy in the enforcement role. So I hope that's a good answer for you. Thanks very much, Simon. Uh, right, okay, now there's a question from Paul. Um, this is a serious question. He has many gay friends and family. They say they were born gay, and I disagree. I think a soul, through life experiences, chooses the life path that it wishes. My question is, are souls created already gay, or do they not get affected by their surroundings and choose to be gay that way? Or does it not have anything to do with the soul? I hope your vacation served you well, Simon. You deserve a longer one, if you ask me. Lots of love. Well, that's a, that's a really kind kind thing, and... Um, without being arrogant, yes, I do deserve a holiday simply because I haven't, yes. apart from that holiday, I just genuinely haven't had holidays. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's like even when I'm on holiday, the phone is ringing and I can't not answer it because you, you never know what it might be. Um, it's a profound question. It's not unlike the question about source. I'll do my very best to answer it without being arrogant or trying to presume um, or, 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 or unintentionally uh, offending or upsetting anybody. All I can give you is what I know, so I'm afraid it won't be very much. When a soul is created by source, or God, divine creator, it chooses <coughs> normally to be male or female. That's the way it is. And let us say... Uh, I'll give you a real example here. Um, a male soul in a male body goes to one of the planets, uh, if you're looking from Earth and you're looking to what we would call Cyrus, and what my American friends would call Sirius. Um, I know no ast- astronomer is going to agree with me, but do you know what? I really don't care. If you stand on Earth and you look, it's actually drawn out. The left-hand side of Cyrus or Sirius is divine feminine energy the right hand side is masculine energy and as you move towards the center of of Sirius or Cyrus it becomes balanced well if you incarnate in your male soul shall we say and you incarnate in a male body and you go to the female part of Sirius and you encounter you you're there for a long time you are coming under huge pressure because you have a male soul in a female energy environment now what do you do do you do you stay like that uh, or do you begin to become more feminine so that's one aspect the other aspect is where somebody comes to a male dominated planet like earth and arrives with a mission doesn't matter what that mission is they arrive with a mission but let's say that they are feminine they suddenly realize oh no i'm on a male planet 
and they die after time and they reincarnate back and, and that goes on as it does for most of us. And they find that if they'd been in a male body, they would have got this job done in, in, in 20 years. But because they're in a female body, they may have a male soul or a female body, they are being discriminated against by the, the local natives because the local natives have made laws and rules which favour the male, overtly looking male. So what we often get is a soul of one gender that's incarnated in a physical body of another gender in order to get its agenda through, its mission. But in so doing, the conscious mind um, becomes to change. And so whether this, this is a gay or not, it, it depends on the way that that soul in the combination with that brain decides who that person is and and what they you know what they want so that's one aspect it's probably not the only aspect but that's the one i'm aware of and i'm and i i meet people of that disposition and the lovely people um and the important thing is that they've got to be confident and happy in what they've chosen to be this is the key because you know people who who are male and say, I wish I was a female or females who wish they were males. And then they go for these operations to change the body. That's a wish. I wish that, you know, they didn't go down the, the, the traditional medical route because there is a really deep soul answer for this. So, um, that's all I can give you because these questions can probably only be answered by source. And, and I don't think JP, you're going to be able to get source on your radio show just yet. I'm, I'm, we're, we're doing our best, actually. You know, we've, we've, got, we've got, you know, Zeus and Odin. <laughs> That's not doing too bad. You're working your way up. We're working our way up. You know, um, Shiva should, you know, maybe we get Shiva next year. And, uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> uh -huh. Right. Okay. Deborah, one question. Uh, I saw a YouTube uh, view at the Amach startup in May 2011 where you said to humans, this is not your earth, it never yep. was and it never will be. Yep. You said that ETs can't survive in this dimension for very long, but they can yep. survive in a hybrid body. Yep. You continued by saying the human race has got to evolve, develop and move on, and then you addressed the YouTube listening audience and made a plea to what you called the shepherds, those yep. whose job it will be to help humans evolve, saying... Get them off the planet, get them off, move them off quickly because you're holding up the agenda. Yeah. Could you please explain this? Yeah. Uh, saying if ETs have to breed with humans to be able to survive here, doesn't that indicate that this is our home planet? What agenda are you referring to here? Why are you saying that all the humans must get off the planet? Uh, uh, hang on, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, let's start with, can you yeah, yeah, please I, explain I, 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 what, it yeah, mean, I, what you mean by get them, who's them and who's doing the getting and yeah, okay, what the getting right, is, okay. yeah. I, first of all, I, I think that I'm, I'm really happy to take the questions. Mm. I, I think that's marvellous that somebody has, has watched and remembered an early show. And I think that just shows how far I've advanced. I think that shows how far spiritually uh, I've come without hopefully not falling down the trap that so many people who set themselves up as, mm. you know, going to do this or going to do that. And they end up, you know, like a firework, they sort of shoot up get everyone's attention and then after about six months they just sort of implode and fall back to earth right shepherds um uh, maybe at that time i didn't want to to be a shepherd maybe i wanted someone else to do the hard work um i was sort of saying to them you know you've got to you've got to do this you've got to do that but i didn't really want to do it myself what i mean by shepherd is somebody who's prepared to put their head out and say okay this is who I am. This is, this is, this is, you know, what I am. And we've got to try and wake up as a, as a species. We've got to try to support each other and realize we're being tricked and, um, conned. So a shepherd is any person could be someone who does Reiki, could be someone who does a uh, spiritual healing of some sort, could be anybody like that who comes into connection with somebody and then helps that person. Because when you're moving them off the planet, what you're doing is you're moving them into the fifth dimension. So I didn't mean let's land a flying saucer and we'll all get in the flying saucer and get off the planet. 
I'm referring to let's move out of this third dimensional reality, let's get through the fourth and get into the fifth. So that's what I mean. Now then, the, 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 the big question here, um, the interesting question is, uh, I think I use the term something like, it's not your planet. Well, you know what? Technically, that's accurate. Because the planet was here before humans arrived. And there were intelligent species on this planet before humans came here. Um, one of them was the interesting jinn creatures. Uh, it's a shock for most people to learn that they actually were here before humans arrived. And they were dispossessed of this planet by human consciousness. And there are other creatures who actually went underground. Now, what's occurred is that of the experiment on the surface of the planet Earth, the humans became the most closely connected with, with, the, with the planet's consciousness. And a bond, a covenant almost, was created between human beings and the planet. So uh, there were celebrations on behalf of the planet, there were things that were done for the planet. It was recognized. Uh, the Gaia, the, the, the consciousness of the, the, the female energy was thanked. And that hasn't broken. The planet remembers that for a very long time, um, technologically primitive but spiritually advanced humans on this planet could commune with the consciousness of the planet directly. And the planet fell in love, and I mean this in a in a pure way, the planet fell in love with the human race and said, this is the group on my back that that has come the furthest, has the greatest potential, and I will take these living creatures with me in advancement. So technically, the planet is not that of the human race, but it has squatters' rights. Now that's a, a fun term, but the reality is that the planet accepted humanity and said, you are going to be the group that I take with me. You are the ones that have the choice uh, as to whether you come with me or you don't. But the offer is there, and no matter how much these evil people damage the earth and damage the living creatures, thank goodness that the real consciousness of the feminine earth has not forgotten that strong bond that was created behind between the human consciousness and the planet. And that's why it's so important to go out and put your hand on a tree or on a rock or to compliment the earth or thank the earth because you are reminding the consciousness of the planet that we are together and that we do want to stay together and be as one. So, right, let's bring this right round then. Uh, I think that that early interview shows hopefully, fingers crossed, how I have learnt myself, because we're all on a journey, and goodness knows I'm not above anybody else, um, and I have learnt what my role was, who I was, and I had to make a choice. Did I think I was totally alien? Did I think I was part alien? Or did I think I was human? Well, I think I'm part human and part something else, but my choice is to be with humanity. So when you look, or anyone takes the time to look at my uh, interviews, they will see a progression, I hope, from a fairly a distant standpoint into one that embraces humanity and the love for humanity. So um, I'm really happy to, to talk about it because, it, it, for me, it's a positive move. Um, I am technically technically accurate. The planet was not given to the humans. The humans came here by accident, and then the planet said, do you know what? You're really nice people. Stay. So that's my answer. That, I've never heard that before, and that makes so much more sense. And when we talk about the chosen race... That's who we're talking about, the whole of yes. humanity, isn't it? Not, yes, not, not just not just the Jews. Yes. <laughs> not just the Jews. I remember I can say that because because I'm a Jew, so mm -hmm. before anybody gets on their high horse, I can say those sort of words. Um, it's not the Jews who are the chosen race. It is 
humanity. But only if humanity will say, um, <clears throat> right, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Right, should we have one more question before a cup of tea? Yes, it's time for the tea. Okay, now, I love this lady's name, Elaine Kubiak. Um, dear Simon, thank you for your courageous work and kindness. Uh, so happy you are back and well. Could you comment, please, on the 300-foot wave that is expected as a result of the nearest nearness of Nibiru? Also, how can one rule out a so psychic... Im- All right, hang on a second. Uh, several questions, right, okay. Right. Let's do the first one, eh? Three hundred foot wave expected as a result of the nearest nearness of Nibiru. Oh, I, I, my, I can't speak tonight. I'm just going to stum. Right, um, right. Let's not go down this road. Um, let's not create it. Let's not create a a bit of a ripple in a bathtub that's going to do what have you. Um, I do, I do accept Planet X and I do accept Nibiru, but what I also accept is at the moment. There is an object uh, which is at some distance, but it is basically stationary. And I believe what will happen is that uh, through the movement, natural movement of the Earth, uh, when this, this object starts up again, its trajectory will be such that it will have a minimal impact on the oceans. So there will be, <coughs> excuse me, there will be some disruption but I don't believe it'll be the end of the world. Will there be <clears throat> a tidal wave? <clears throat> Excuse me. Will there be a tidal wave? Yes, there will. And there will be something, but it is not the end of the world. Um, and I am always get somewhat concerned when YouTube video after YouTube video um, talks about Planet X or Nibiru and then how, you know, all of America is going to be wiped out, etc., etc., etc. So no... Yes, there is Nibiru, there is Planet X, but it is being stalled, and that's the right word, I think, uh, and its passage across the, 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 the galaxy will not impact anything like the way people are talking. We have much more to fear from a neutron, low-yield nuclear de- bomb detonated on the seabed off the Canary Isles to create a tidal wave. I'm far more concerned about crazy humans creating uh, a false flag and swamping parts of America with, with that. That's much more my concern. So, the second part of Kitty Elaine's question is, uh, I think much more important, personal, how can one rule out, which I mean, uh, um, how can one um, rule out a psychic implant impeding healing? Um, I have a le- left foot surgery in 2007 that has gone very bad and constant pain when walking. Efforts to heal it have seemed to come to a block. So is there a psychic implant that is holding that healing back? Right, well, I, I can't answer that because, uh, you, you know, uh, somebody, a healer would have to see the individual. Well, there are some people that don't. Some people can do it at a long distance. I, I tend to have to have the visual. Um it, it is possible. Uh, psychic um, blocks are given generally after an attack has been made or if you're predicting the future, you put the block in and then you make the attack. So somebody who's um, being attacked uh, will have their immune system somehow uh, reduced or a energy uh, implant will somehow affect the instructions from the brain that would go to the body to... Uh, order a good self-defense so that individual our questioner needs to go to a a a psychic healer to have her body scanned not just the foot actually you need your whole body scanned to see what's in there um and you what you please try to understand is that if you did have something like that it wouldn't be the only one and sometimes these things are interconnected so there may be like uh, three or four devices which all support each other Um, and you do need to go to someone who knows what they're doing because they have to be taken out in a sequence and the the, the way they have to be taken out um, is very important as well so it is possible um, but I I can't do any more just like this Okay, that is going past you, isn't it? <sighs> yeah, it is. I mean, I've never known. <laughs> it. I mean, the, the audience, the audience tonight knows something is going on. Um, you know, 
uh, that's what I'm really glad that, that, you know, that they can hear it. It's right outside the bloody door. I mean, I've never known it like this. It's, yeah, we get the odd police car and ambulance, but this is, this is a town of 12,000 people. 12,000. That's tiny. Um, but the incidents that's occurred tonight are right outside the back door, 30 feet from the back door, straight in a line. Um, that's really bizarre. And the number of emergency vehicles flying up and down. Um, but no helicopters yet. I'm very disappointed. All right. Well, helicopters. maybe you should switch on your Merkabah. bar. <laughs> that, well, how about I switch on the kettle? Yeah. Let's do that. Listen, um, do you remember Genesis? Um, Did you ever hear Genesis? I, 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 I was a little bit too young um, when the Earth and the World was created. Ah, uh, the one with uh, Peter Gabriel <laughs> and Phil Collins. Yes, of course. I think. Yeah, go on then. Your own ahead. special way. I love this track. Okay, see you. Then. And welcome back to Connecting Consciousness with Simon Parks, with your producer and interviewer, JP. How are you doing? Did you enjoy that? I love that song. Yes, I thought it was nice. I had a uh, I had a Genesis moment last week, and I just I couldn't stop listening to that and the Eleventh Earl of Mar, which I'll probably play after the show. Um, so here we go. There we are. Let's uh, now. Meanwhile, from from the Earth to the Moon. Yeah. Hello, Simon and JP from Marco. Uh, thank you for everything you're doing on doing for mankind. William Rutledge, an Apollo 20 astronaut, filmed an ancient spaceship on the moon and recorded images of an ancient female pilot. Was that a hoax or an actual event? Thank you. Right, I, I haven't seen any images on that. Um, a number of astronauts uh, privately with their own camera equipment uh, have filmed... Uh, craft or structures on the moon. Um, many, many un, you know, unmanned, unwomaned craft have taken those pictures as well. And some of them, of course, have made it onto the internet where the sensors have, have failed to pick them up. So I, I don't know in that particular story. Uh, you couldn't help but see what's there. If you genuinely went to the moon, you would see enough uh, on top of the surface to let you know that there was something big under the surface. So here on this planet, we have blast doors and structures which we know lead down into many, many layers of an underground base, and that's no different. Uh, for heaven's sake, you know, we've got bases on the Moon and on Mars which have the name Adam and Eve to celebrate the fact that uh, in in the Bible, Adam and Eve left the promised land and uh, incorrectly the Bible talks about just the one man and the one woman when there were many hundreds of human uh, people who left and one uh, group followed Eve and one group followed Adam and it was done like that so that if Adam failed or Eve failed then there was a 50-50 chance one of the other groups would make it and, and survive. As it happened, both uh, groups made it. And so that is understood and known, and that's why there's one base on the moon and one base on the Mars called Adam and Eve. So if you were to uh, take pictures of that, I can imagine um, most agencies or organisations would come down on you like a tonne of bricks because that is concrete evidence that there is life outside of this planet and it's irrefutable so that sort of stuff is not going to be shown on on youtube something that does come up is a lot of faked stuff or something good comes up is taken down very quickly interestingly enough while we're on the subject of astronauts and i, I sometimes get names mixed up but um i uh, uh did write on a very well-known uh, blog site that i'd had a conversation with an astronaut <clears throat> and uh, unfortunately I got his name wrong <clears throat> excuse me and somebody who obviously likes to to belittle the information that I give out said um, oh you know Simon Parks is obviously making things up you know you couldn't uh, have a, a Skype with an astronaut as I said I've done 
and not remember his name. It's such an important, important thing. You'd remember it. Yes, it is important. But as I wrote back, um, actually, I Skyped with six uh, astronauts and um, sometimes I get them mixed up. So, of course, this person then came back and said, oh, rubbish, rubbish. But fortunately, I was able to say, well, if you go on Al Alfred Levermont Weber's site, you'll actually see that I did indeed have a Skype with uh, Edgar Mitchell, uh, astronaut, who sadly, of course, just recently passed away. Um, and, you know, I, I mentioned the show on September the 17th at Birmingham that I'm going to be doing. I've actually got a signed photograph of uh, Edgar Mitchell um, and some other interesting memorabilia, which I was very, very graciously accepted from uh, astronauts who I've had the privilege to meet and talk to. So I'm going to take those along. Um, uh, there's no harm in doing that. So if anybody's coming along uh, to, to the show uh, on, the se on the 17th of September, ask me and I'll, I'll show you the, the, the bits and pieces. So I have the greatest respect for astronauts regardless of whether they went to the moon when they said they did, they have been up in a rocket and they've been round outside of the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, I, you know, I willingly, in this body and this consciousness, I couldn't do that. So I'm sorry I have no more information on that, but thank you for writing in. Yeah, um, apparently she's known as Mona Lisa, and she's a kind of, um, she's Asian-looking and a giant. And there's this uh, very long, it's like you know, many kilometers long and uh, very ornately decorated. It has like all these different kind of, um, it's like a, like a pattern on it. Uh, right. But it's I'm, familiar kind of, with, I'm familiar with the other one that's sort of sitting on, as if it's sitting on a chair with, a, with like it's resting on its knees. But this, this one that I'm, that's been described, I, I have no knowledge of. Mm. It was, it looks like somebody in stasis. It had, you know, it, it wasn't like a dead thing. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, it, as I said, it looked like you could say, like, a, imagine that the Japanese were descended from some, um, much larger race. This would, you know, this looked like a progenitor of that sort of thing. Um, I think Wynne said it was a Pleiadian ship. I can't remember. Anyway. But we have a question from Isha, who's age six in Sussex, who says, Simon, who made planet Earth? Very good question. Right, well, um, I think this must be the, the youngest person who's um, ever asked me a question. She's uh, a big fan. Well, I'm assuming that it's genuine, and uh, this really is uh, a young lady, uh, six years old. Oh, oh yes, it's, um, she's the daughter of, uh, of one of your, your uh, CC crew. Okay, right, fine. Um, this is the third question, interestingly enough, and this is how energy works, isn't it? The third question that it's really sort of aimed at source. Uh, Earth is a water world. And water worlds, that's the, the alien term for them. Water worlds are highly prized and incredibly rare. And I was watching a film uh, with a friend not too long ago, which showed an explosion over Mars and the, the question was left. In fact, it was called Ice Age. Ice Age 4, and the question at the very end of the film was, well, where did the, all the water on Mars go? And some of the water from that stripping off of Mars' atmosphere came here. So we were already created as a world predominantly with water uh, prior to mm, 250 million years ago. The universe is balanced. You can't just have spheres or, or lumps of rock that are barren floating around. You don't get any chance of evolution and life. So what you have to do is you have to create microcosms and you create a water world or a world that can have life and you surround it with planets that have the potential to develop or grow and maybe spring forth their own life at some point. Um, so Earth was created as part of the divine plan, part of the overall consciousness. Every um, Multiverse has a verse, and within the verse are universes. And just like we have two suns, we have this visible sun that we see, but we have a dark sun. There's always a binary star system into every um, uh, galaxy. And so we were always slated to uh, be a life in this 
part of the multiverse. So we're not unique, but we're damn rare. This is the most unusual planet. Um, but what's made it more unusual is that other alien races have brought life here to us. So there are many things on this planet that uh, would not have evolved naturally, but have been either brought here full stop or have been artificially created and mixed with other things. So it's part Earth-like and part not. Who made the planet? Uh, source. The same thing that breathes life into everything. The consciousness of creation, of experience and of love. So that's what made the planet Earth. Thank you for your really lovely question. Thank you. From Paul. Hi, Simon. I would like to know exactly what is under Antarctica, as I have read that it used to be situated near the equator before tectonic plate shifts and cataclysm put it where it is situated today. Many thanks. Paul from CC. Thank you, Paul, and thank you for being uh, in CC. Um, goodness knows we need as many members as we can as we move towards a very interesting time. Um, certainly it's moved. Uh, in fact, there are old, to my knowledge, there are old maps maybe of 500, 600 years ago, um, which were copied from ancient Greek maps which were themselves copied from maps probably around 10,000, uh, 10,000, 12,000 years ago, which shows part of Antarctica not covered in ice. So there's a solid land, land surface. Um, if you wish to hide something, then having a covering of ice uh, is very handy. If you have a low level of technology that, 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 that stops you because you don't have the ability to get through the ice and to survive underground but if you have a reasonably high level of technology that isn't a problem and you use it as a shield when Lemuria and Atlantis finally the, 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 the politics and the diplomacy no longer could hold it together and they had a fisticuffs um, just making light of a very desperately sad situation when that occurred and some of the survivors from Lumeria and Atlantis realized that they were one people, one consciousness, and that ego, the, the seek of greed, the seek of power, had basically destroyed two um, almost unique civilizations. And those people decided that they would take themselves away from humanity, and the best thing to do would be to go underground. You have a number of uh, leaders ever since, and I think the most Famous would be Adolf Hitler, who either gained information from old documents or more likely from his own experience with greys and reptilians, uh, realised that there was a society based under there that he certainly wanted to be involved in. Um, people often ask me, if Hitler made contact with this group, why, you know, why didn't he flee there? Um, and the answer sometimes I give surprises people. The reason that, that Hitler was not given access to an underground base, because I've never accepted Hitler died in the bunker, the reason he never disappeared off to an underground base was because had he been allowed to do so, then the United States would have come after him. Because he would have had at his disposal the means to control the world. But by fleeing to South America with a, a ton of money, but no army and no military machine at his disposal, he actually wasn't a threat to the United States. If he had gone to Antarctica to where much of his uh, advanced equipment had gone to, then he or somebody following on from him would have uh, endangered the balance. We also need to understand that, that that some of the societies that, that we call Hollow Earth or Agarthan wouldn't touch Hitler with a barge pole. So they weren't going to have him. Because if Hitler had, had the choice, he would have gone to one of those bases. So what is under there? It is a, a range of different groups who have all come together to um, form one consciousness, 
one rule which until very recently was forget the people on the surface they're only going to destroy themselves it's not our concern that's changed now uh, it's very much to a case of we learnt a lesson in Lemuria and Atlantis we should share that with our brothers and sisters on the surface and we should go up onto the surface and try to influence them so that never again do they bring about a cataclysm so that's my answer it's a nice question thank you very good very good to chakra chakra system is the chakra system changing should we have our chakra systems expunged to allow for a new connection with source there is a school of thought that believes that chakras are not um, not necessary and are holding us back even well I have to be very careful here um, if if I have a a television and I have an aerial or a satellite dish I can receive messages from or television programs from where I'm supposed to but it means I can also receive messages from somewhere I didn't think of someone could beam a message into my aerial or my dish and try to upload information into me chakras um, work as they're supposed to in a sequence but the one at the crown uh, or the forehead or whatever you want to call it uh, is your connection to source now I would say to people um, if you look at the first how we you know we get messages through television the very first instance of a Doctor Who film with the creatures that I always refer to as the Cybermen um, and these these were really really um, the costumes are really cheap and tinny but it doesn't matter that that plays into the beauty of it because this was something made in about 1966 but if you actually look at the, the storyboard these creatures have like a disc on their head it's nothing more than just a bicycle lamp but it was in the story written that they received radio waves from Mondas, which was their home planet. And they received them through this dish that was attached to their heads. And that's what sort of gave them the hive mind coordination. Now, the way the chakras are laid out means that we are connected to source and we can receive and send. But that doesn't stop something negative attempting also to transmit on that frequency to try to, to get it. Because humans were interfered with and the energy was separated from the physical, it means that much of what should be connected within us is just slightly outside of us. So I don't want to remove anything. I want us to rejoin. I want the strands of DNA, I want the chakras all to really connect closely and to work that are not impeded by anything. And that's what Wi-Fi is about, I believe. Wi-Fi, I think, is designed to interfere with the way our natural uh, energy creations are supposed to communicate with ourselves. Uh, I don't think anything is for a good purpose when it's created by people whose own goal is to control humanity because the chakras allow the advancement of the spiritual and the, the, the non-spiritual. In other words, you can spiritually evolve, and that will bring your physical body with you. So, um, no, I don't think it's we write off the chakras. I think we have to protect them, and we have to um, bring them to be closer to the working body. So that's my answer. Okay, question now from Aslim Pasha. Anu, Allah, Yahweh. Hello, Simon and Jay. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the wonderful energies you introduced to our planet through your shows and conversations. My question is, Anu, Allah and Yahweh the same being? And if so, is there any other being in our culture the same being? Love and gratitude, Aslim. Um, my phone's going like mad today. It is, it's singing away. Yeah, I think it's because people are concerned for me. It's it's really lovely that um, you know there are so many people out there who who really you know are worried. It's fine. I'm I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, the difficulty we have is that many um, technologically advanced races have landed here, 
and rather like the idea of, of humans bowing down to them and treating them like gods. Um, a really well-evolved being won't do that. A really evolved being will say, don't you, don't bow down to me. I'm not a god. I'm just more technologically advanced than you. But of course, uh, unfortunately, many of these creatures rather like the idea of that. And so we've had over many continents, uh, sometimes the same god, uh, in their eyes, of course, moving from one continent to another, setting up their own culture, which is usually a sacrificial type culture. However, the question isn't quite like that. The question is asking about religious figures who are worshipped by many millions of people um, and asking if they're the same, possibly the same one. Uh, not necessarily no. What when you get a a ruling family uh, of negative types, then one will seek to choose a human group and say, "This is going to be the human group I'm going to work with." Uh, I haven't got the time or the or the patience to work with all these groups, so I'm going to choose one group. Let's look at the Jewish group. So, one group, the Jewish race, uh, was very, very wedded to a particular um, being um, and they considered they had a very special relationship and they still do. But so did the Zulus. They had a very special relationship. Um, so did the Hopi tribe. There are many, many groups that believe that they have a unique um, connection to something from the stars. The difficulty is when we see the same type of cult reappearing in different places at different times in the human in the human time frame. Um, I've had some very interesting conversations with quite senior people in religious organizations. And in one particular organization, uh, they let it be known to me, they knew quite well that the uh, being that the audience or the the, um, the parishioners believed to be God in this particular religious group, they knew it was an alien. They knew it was off planet. They knew it was not human at all. Uh, this particular uh, being was an alien and they were recruiting uh, for this particular group. So they were absolutely uh, clear about it. But if if the management of this organization contained maybe a thousand people, mainly only three or four knew the truth. And what we find time and time again in religious organizations is that the vast majority of people join a religious organization because they passionately believe in God, they passionately believe in good against evil, they want to do good, and uh, even when they see the supposedly holy men committing the most horrible crimes, they seem un, unpowered or disempowered to be able to do anything about it. They just sort of shrug their shoulders. I can't understand anybody in a big, big religious organization when priest after priest or whoever it might be commits the most horrible crimes against children. Why the audience who go to church every Sunday and put money in a pot, why they don't stop doing it? You know, if, 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 if I'd had the reports, and they've all been true. You see them on the on the mainstream news that this priest and that priest has been done for abusing children. Well, the best way to change an organisation is to stop giving it money. So why don't they just go to church, do their prayers, and then when the tin comes round to put money and they don't put it round, they put a little note in there saying, tell you what, we'll start giving you money when you clean up your act. See, this is why people don't like me, because I don't stand shouting and screaming nonsense. I actually give people some really good ideas, some really good ideas that are non, non-violent, but can bring about the changes. I often say to people, um, you know, I, I, I wonder how old age pensioners, senior citizens, how they can afford to live. Well, if we really cared... If, if 5,000 people, and that's nothing in a big city like London, if 5,000 people went and sat around the entrance to a big supermarket, we won't mention the supermarket, it doesn't matter, a supermarket, 5,000 people sat there and prevented anybody going in um, and said, on Friday, 
let, let old age pensioners or senior citizens have half price on staple things like cheese, um, milk, etc., etc. Do you know what? Within three days, they'd do it because the, the, the population would be using its power, non-violent, its power to make change. And, and I have to say to people that at the moment on this planet, you don't obtain change through the ballot box. You don't. It's a complete and utter con. But you do obtain change when you use the power of yourself. So when one person stands outside a shop and says, these shoes you've sold me, uh, they're rubbish, doesn't do anything. But if 10 people stand outside the shop, that, that owner of that shop comes out and says, I'll give you a free pair of shoes. Now, I know it shouldn't be like that because we should all be treated as equal and fair, but that's not the world we're in. So um, I don't have much time for religion. I've got plenty of time for God. So that's my answer. Excellent. Now, um, da, 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 da. there's a question about Shungite and... Um, maybe I'll, I'll ask Walt that question, uh, because how is your, let's, let's just say, how is your Shungite experience so far, Simon? Uh, Shungified <laughs> is a word that doesn't exist, but it, 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 it takes the word that I feel and makes it reality simply because you and other kind people, uh, realizing that I was slowly being baked to death, by the elite who decided to stick a BTS, British Telecom, uh, mobile phone mast, cell phone mast, and I've measured it exactly 100 feet from my house, 100 feet, and, and been bathing me in the waves, and some really nice people, including yourself, JP, thank you, um, out of the kindness of your hearts, sent me some shungite, which I put round, and I did some rose quartz and things like that. Um, and also, actually, the, the, the love and the kind thoughts of people, uh, I think, combined to, to keep me safe. And, yeah, it's a very up and down, but, you know, um, I'm OK. And uh, acts of kindness go a long way. It's like people who donate. You know, I don't have I don't have a, a nine to five job. I don't have a job. My job is doing this. So anybody who is kind, um, I'm sure I'm sure it has a beneficial effect. Um, and you were a really big, big um, helper there, JP. Thank you. Well, indeed, uh, there's kindness all around, and uh, I'd like to say thank you to all the people who donate to uh, to my particular uh, little uh, little site. Even though they're all down at the moment, but I'm, I'm getting help, <laughs> getting my sites back up. Uh, so, anyhow, here's a question um, from Tom. Uh, if Soros, Kissinger, the Bushes and Rothschilds are all supporting Hillary, who does this leave in Trump's camp? It seems that just about all of the media and known power figures are opposed to a Trump presidency. Mm. Or is he just, is this just a, a bait and switch? No, you're absolutely correct. Well done. You've absolutely hit the nail on the head. Um, all of the, the new money, the, 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 um, human interface that means the politicians the multimedia they're all supporting hillary clinton because they believe there's more money to be got out of people if you if you were um a big big film studio the last thing you want is the end because what will you do how will you make films you've always made films you've always made money you've got shareholders stock and bond people they want to make money. So Hillary Clinton represents the status quo. We keep it going along. Yes, it's very shaky and it's wobbly, but we still keep it going. So those people who control the media uh, in Capitol Hill in America, the politicians, uh, the middle ground within business and the top end of business, they actually want Hillary Clinton because she represents for them the best uh, chance to keep control of the human race, keep taking the money off people and keep themselves in power. Now you have got, on the other hand, a group of people from the technological corporations uh, who foresee a very big opportunity if Mr. Trump uh, was to be president, uh, 
You also have arms of the military who for decades have been wanting to turn on their political masters. If you have a so-called democracy, the military publicly have to take orders from the politicians. That's the deal. So some of them are, are sick of it. So it is the top end of the technological corporations, what we call the industrial military complex, and and some of the military guys who are supporting Trump. The difficulty, from my perspective, is that we have some of the satanic arm of the Illuminati who are also supporting Trump because they want to take it, as they see it, to the natural conclusion, which is a good reduction from their perspective, a good reduction of the human population. So we have a divine dividing split, a dividing split between those who wish to see the world stay as it is and those that wish to push the button and to create something unusual. Um, I talked about Hillary Clinton, and I said that uh, this is probably what caused me some aggravation. I really don't care. Um, yes, Hillary Clinton has a clone. Maybe she has more than I don't know, but she, there's a clone that I'm aware of. But in order to make it work, Hillary would have to agree to have her soul taken out of her body and placed into the clone. That's the only way clones work really well. But Hillary is many things, but she's not stupid. And she knows if she did that, then they would kill her as much as blink an eye, because they wouldn't need her anymore. So she has not agreed to have her soul removed from her body to go into the clone. So here we have a woman who's running for president and hasn't got a friend in the world because the very people who are funding her campaign and supporting her campaign would like her to be replaced with a clone because then you can manipulate the clone and the clone will go on forever. So no wonder Hillary is, is in the terrible physical and mental state that she's in, never mind about the fact that the, 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 the draconist part of her is breaking down. But she, she's got no future. So she's... Uh, basically just counting down the days. So we have a, a situation where a presidential candidate hardly leaves the office now. He's doing all her campaigning from her office. And we have another man who is hell-bent, and I'm using the word deliberately, hell-bent on overturning Capitol Hill and the rule of the politicians. So this is the nearest incredible, it is as far as I'm concerned, the most important election in America for 50 years. Yeah. Okay. From America, just down the spine, Latin America, to Grace. Grace has been waiting all... She's so pleased. It's the first time she can listen to the radio show live, so it's a great honor for her. And uh, she say thanks to JP for giving the link. Uh, and all the members of the group I created to give my knowledge, your, your knowledge and teachings, say a big thank you, Simon. So, so that's, that's just... That's just the, the preamble from Grace. So this is, this is her question. Now she's in Latin America and she's saying, uh, regarding your last updated videos, I perfectly understand your concern about Europe and America, but in Argentina, we have abductions and chemtrails as well. Please could you give a message to us and which is the role Argentina plays in this game? Thank you, Simon. Love and blessings to you. Well, Grace, uh, first of all, it's, it's a great honor for me when anybody listens to the show and then goes and does their own research. Um, so, you know, it, it cuts both ways. Uh, I, I've always tried, I really have tried not to be too anglophobic, um, I beg your pardon, <laughs> anglocentric. Uh, the difficulty is that the, 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 the battle for this planet is going to be won or lost, and it's going to be won, isn't it? But it's a figure of speech. In America, Britain and Germany. That has, does not mean that there isn't anything else going on in other countries or continents, and I've never, hopefully, ever given the impression that I'm not interested or I don't care. Uh, but you, in Argentina, you've had your own share of, of uh, very interesting material, because, um, without going down a huge subject rabbit hole here, the black goo one of the key locations for the black goo was off Argentina. And that was one of the major reasons for the war between Great Britain and Argentina. In actual fact, what a lot of people not perhaps aware of is that just after the war concluded, and obviously no Britain technically won the war, 
um, a group of Special Boat Squadron, SBS, and SAS landed and blew up an underground facility, or at least put it accurately, they sealed off a facility where black goo was being um, manipulated. So, you know, Argentina is actually and has played a very key place. And if you look at your history now, it's kicking off again, as we say. Argentina is now again asking for uh, independence from Britain in a way it hasn't done for the last maybe 10 or 15 years. Uh, chemtrailing, I was one of the few people that didn't jump on the bandwagon some, I don't know, a year ago now. Uh, it was all over the internet that chemtrailing had finished. It was all over. Uh, and and I said, no, it isn't. It's greatly reduced, but it isn't over. And, you know, it, it, it's right. It's not over. In fact, it's built up again. And many countries where consciousness has begun to uh, outstrip the ability of the controlling element through their technology to keep humans down, that's when they've increased chemtrailing. So if you're seeing a great deal of chemtrails over your town or your city, it is because the elite fear they're losing the consciousness battle for that particular group. So yes, in one way, it's awful that you're seeing these chemtrails over your part of the world. But look on it the other way. The elite are doing their figures and working out that they're losing control of that. So you're asking about Argentina. Um, Argentina has a tremendously great history. I've talked a little bit about Adolf Hitler. Um, you know, one of the, the, the amazing things, of course, was uh, some of the, um, the, the Peron's property uh, was built of gold bricks, literally gold bricks, plastered. And in one situation where they were knocking through to make a kitchen extension, they literally found gold blocks making the wall. So Argentina is a key place. It has a very mixture of energy. Some of it is quite uh, special. Um, think about some of the jungle coverings and some of the interesting pyramids and uh, temples that are under there. But there's also some very heavy negative stuff. Your main concern, I think, should be to look across to your neighbours. I know South America is a huge country, but Venezuela, where you have situations in Venezuela now where shopkeepers are being ordered at gunpoint to sell food to the public at a cheaper price than they paid for it. Well, we're still in a 3D economic world, and of course that's not going to work. Venezuela is uh, near to the point of collapse. It really is. So many countries in South America are, are looking at how they can detach from the United States of America because they've seen what the prior drop in oil has done. Obviously, if you have a particular president that doesn't run an economy very well and is corrupt, that's going to have a serious impact. So please, uh, Grace, uh, when I talk about the, the big three countries, it doesn't mean I've taken my eye off the ball at all. It means that at this time in the Earth's history, this is where things are playing out that affect all of humanity. It doesn't mean that I am uh, turning my back on communities that are being chemtrailed, fried, beaten, lied to. I understand that. Um, and, you know, you just please have to believe me that I, I love and care for people in, in countries that I don't mention. So thank you very much indeed for writing in. Yay, that's from uh, from uh, Grace there. So where is that window? You know, we <laughs> everybody's calling me today. Everybody's coming in. I don't know how many um, calls I've just had to click no, go away to <laughs> during this show. It's like, They've all, they've all come out of the woodwork. So anyway, uh, I hope everybody's doing fine. Um, and, uh, let's have another look at the school board here. Um, and, uh, we, uh, we had, um, so I had, to, I had to do a special search because I, I was being slightly, uh, how can I put this? Encouraged by, um, by uh by Fran and Brett and Becky <laughs> to answer to ask Grace's question and I've completely lost my place. But there was this there was a very interesting question and it was um the next one 
It was basically, uh, if I can find it, and um, it was about Satanism and yeah. how Satanism is a um, is is being you know is like how do we know what is a Satanist number one and how do we know that we're not doing Satanist things in our daily lives and I, I you know I think that this this is a question I've covered in my radio shows years ago. Uh, was called the externalization of satanic ritual uh, with Katie Galanti. A few years ago we did it. Um, and it's basically like all of these, you know, really almost pornographic videos you get with music. Right. That sort okay. of... So, right, okay. Yeah, so, go ahead. So, so, um, right. Okay, that's okay. So, so uh, is this Grace's question? No, no, the Argentina question was Grace's right, question. Well, so this is... This so is, I, I've, an, I've answered Grace's question. You have answered Grace's question. That's, great. that's yeah. okay. <laughs> right, um, fine. The, the point about Satanism is that it is a word we use which has no substance, shape or form in the fifth dimension or higher. I talked earlier about the rules and the laws of this planet being formed on fourth dimensional energy. In other words, the rules and the laws that we give names to here don't have those names in the fourth dimension, but they have the energy feeling. If, if, you, if you were to um, drink some beer or you were to lick some salt, you would get a, 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 a feeling or a sensation or a flavor or a smell. You put a name to that. And that is the way it is with, with satanic energy. It has no name, but it has this uh, label or it has this particular feeling to it. So when we do something on this planet, if we do it from divine source, there'll be no satanic link to it. If we do something because we are picking up how we've been brought up from a child or how we've been influenced by... Uh, television or by the rules and the laws or if we are mind controlled by electronic devices or by black magicians uh, we can as a consciousness be moved slightly towards uh, the uh, what you'd call the satanic line so we talked earlier about South America well if you think about uh, the sacrifice cult of the Aztecs that is satanic so but they wouldn't have called it that. They probably wouldn't have had the word for it. They saw it as uh, offering the life of a child or a person to appease their gods. Well, that's so mind-controlled. It's mind-boggling that you would kill a living creature to appease somebody. You know, in, in, in the Bible, and I'm not very good with the Bible, unfortunately, but um, was it Jacob who was asked to kill his son to show he loved God and then he lifted the, the knife and he was just about to kill, kill his child and God said no that's alright I just wanted to test you to see how much you loved me well in the American that's BS that's bullshit isn't it because no God, real God would actually test a person and say nearly kill your child so that I can see how much you love me because a real God would know how much you loved that person. So we now understand what s satanic force is. Satanic force is something that says, I'm better than you, I'm more powerful than you, but if you join my club and you wear these black robes and you do what I tell you, um, I'll give you power over other people. And that's what Satanism is. It's a evil, nasty um, trickery that draws people in and to an extent that they feel they can't escape and creates a cult so do we do things that are satanic on this planet yes we do but do we do overt things um not if we uh, successfully fight through it in other words if somebody came to to any member of 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 the listeners to this radio show and said you know i want you to do something that was obviously satanic, you would say no. But if someone said, I tell you what, I'll give you a million dollars if you do something, then, you know, a person who isn't committed to truth and light would say, oh, a million dollars, oh, yeah, I'll do that. So 
Satanism isn't just about um, watching a Hammer horror film at, at 11 o'clock at night and seeing some horrible, scary things. It's energy that's connected and deliberately connected to humanity on this planet. And that's why it's so important for humanity to evolve, to change, and to raise its frequency, because this negative, dense, satanic energy uh, can be left behind. If you think of um, uh, a, a jug of water, and you know that if you put some things on the water, uh, like a cork, a cork floats, but if you put a piece of metal, obviously it sinks. Well, if you can imagine that, that Satanism is a piece of metal and you've got humanity as a cork but the cork's got a magnet stuck on it and so this heavy piece of metal which should fall to the bottom of your tub of water doesn't because it's been pulled towards this tiny piece of metal that's in humanity so if we can raise our frequency and we can rise up what will happen is that connection between my allegorical piece of metal and, and the magnet on the cork will go and basically the satanic energy will fall downwards because it's got nothing to grip onto so unfortunately the media push it uh, the entertainment industry push it anything that is about money corruption control of people will have satanic energy intermeshed into it the church as far as I'm concerned many of the churches I can't say all of them many of the churches also do any structure that has influence over people has been nobbled as we say in great britain you know if i want to if i want to control a people i control everything that makes a decision if i can from the government right down to um, what films are put on television because i want to keep my message the same and so we can only rely on the human spirit to uh, detect this to turn its back on it and to evolve. So it's a really good question. It's a question that goes to the heart of whether humanity wants to be free or whether it wants to be like Hillary Clinton and, you know, steady as she goes and will carry on. Um, we've had enough of that. It's time we were free. That's a good question. Thank you. Agreed. Now, this is from Aurora. Hello, Simon. Welcome back. I hope your holiday was restorative. I have a baffling relationship with dogs. I owned them when I was a child, but I feel that when a dog approaches me now, say when I'm walking in the park, I really feel an inner sort of terror. After the dog leaves, I sometimes find myself in tears. This feels like bizarre and embarrassing behaviour. You have mentioned how you own cats because you have a positive connection with them. Can we also have a negative connection with some animals, even those that are known as man's best friend? Hello, Aurora. Um, very difficult without having, and of course we can't on the radio show, have more understanding of what your relationship was as a child and how it changed. Um, putting aside a more mundane or 3D reason for this, there is a possibility. Um, many, many people only get back their full memories or learn who they are as they approach about the between the 40th and the 60th year of their life on this planet it's a key period in time because what happens is that you become strong enough to remember what you'd forgotten or to accept some of the uh, really challenging uh, visions or thoughts and you know, you're ready to evolve and change. Now, if you'd had a association with what we call the Canis or Canis type of alien, which is a, a dog-like human creature, uh, you could go through life where, while that was blanked from your mind, you just treated a dog like you would normally. But then if that subconscious memory breaks through or parts of it break through or a nagging feeling breaks through every time you are faced with something like that it could put you into shock and then you have this opposite reaction where you cry because it's almost a relief but it could also be sadness now i need to give you some evidence because that for many people sounds crazy people who have experienced um 
greys, alien greys, and have had negative experiences with mantis or mantid, uh, even those who've had a good experience, uh, in, when they're back in the 3D world, are terrified of wasps. Because wasps have very large eyes. I know wasps sting you, but wasps have very large eyes in proportion to their body. They have a strange shaped body. Um, and uh, time and time again, people who've had uh, experience with either the insectoid races or uh, alien, some alien grey races have a great aversion to wasps. But if you put them and show them a bee that don't have the same reaction, but both sting, although I know that a wasp is more aggressive and will sting you more than a bee. But nevertheless, there is a possibility um, uh, if we could remove any sort of 3D ones. So that's my answer to you. Thank you for writing in. Interesting about the wasp. I've, I've got a wasp nest in my... Uh just on the other side of the door of my conservatory, and it's a, uh, I'm thinking, hmm, shall I be aggressive towards it? No, I want to work with it and see it. And so far, nobody's been stung, and they just get on with what they do. So, yeah. Well, so I had, a, I had a wasp nest in my shed, in my allotment shed, and uh, I left it there until they moved on. And then I bought, for the next year, I bought one of those pretend wasp nests, mm -hmm. And hung that up, and that, that I haven't, haven't been troubled since because when a, when a wasp's nest is detected, then no other wasp will come there. So no, I just tend to leave things alone if I can. Right. So, final question, and this is the eyes have it. Simon, you mentioned green eyes. This is from Daya. Uh, Simon, you have mentioned green eyes, brown eyes, and blue eyes have particular meanings. Even two eyes of a different color have a specific meaning. What about hazel eyes? Do they mean anything? Hmm. Well, I think the thing I would say is that um, it isn't source that uh, gives uh, credence or hierarchy. It's, it's humans who create a system of um, power and strength. So, you know, you have a police force and you have ranks, or in, in the military you have ranks. And so elites on this planet have tried to identify individuals um, and grade them. Um, you know, it's, it's like having a, a tattoo mark, you know, sort of saying what you are. But they needed it, but they needed it to be secret because they didn't want everyone to know their secret. See, if everybody knows that if you've got green eyes, it means at some point in one of your manifestations, you have been in a physical body that's been part of the controlling force. Um, then it means that you were at one time in the elite. So a modern day elite person, a Mr. Rothschild, or, or let's just call him happy old Jacob, wouldn't really want the world knowing that because they would like to identify those people and try and bring them in. And I, and I, when I talk to people on, on the radio shows or, or conferences or one-to-ones, I always give this analogy and I'll give it again because it's, it's damned accurate. Uh, if I'm in a very large corporation, a corporation that's run by the top man, it's usually a man, isn't it, elite, and he wants a secretary and he's got, you know, a massive empire. So he could advertise, or he could say, hmm, let's look who we've got in our organisation who would like to be my secretary. Well, it depends what he wants. If if he's a, he wants a very pretty girl to be pretty, then he'll choose a girl who's got blonde eyes, I beg your pardon, blonde hair blonde eyes. and blue eyes. Uh, mind you, but, there's, there's merit to blonde eyes and blue hair. Uh, yes. But meanwhile... Well, Um, but he wouldn't be doing that. He would want somebody to answer the telephone and take his messages. So he would recruit a female. That's if he's straight or bisexual. He would want a female, because we're talking about the elite on the planet, who had black hair or red hair and green eyes. Predominantly, he would like red hair with green eyes, because that, in his upbringing, is his ideal uh, um, 
not partner in terms of life partner, but partner in business with a female. So if you're going, if you're an elite person and you're going to abuse somebody, then usually it's a blonde-haired and blue-eyed girl. Think about all the the media, the, the entertainment industry. Why do you think they've pushed blonde hair and blue eyes? Why have they done that? It wasn't that the human race thought that girls with blue eyes and blonde hair were the prettiest. It was because the people who were satanic, in the satanic arm of the Illuminati, pushed that as their um, image. And you just think of um, our young lady uh, the, skipping along the yellow brick road to see the Wizard of Oz. But if we then look at uh, characters who have got brown eyes and black hair, that actually is considered quite um, important as well. The green eyes and the red hair is a ancient connection on this planet going right back in time. Green eyes and black hair is not so far back, and it's more... so complicated, and I'm just not doing well at explaining this. Red hair and green eyes is a magical energy connection. So if I'm talking about Averbury Ring, or I'm talking about the ley lines, then... Um, a female with red hair and green eyes personifies the connection to the planet Earth because of her um, ancestry, but because also she's been hooked into the power structure. Now, if you understand that, you go into an office, and I would really ask you to do this. I don't mean your local library, because that isn't going to work on the same way, but if we take take a big company, a multinational company, start looking at, at where these people are and look at the colour of their hair, and look at the colour of their their eyes, and you begin to, to find out that actually those in um, decision-making jobs don't have blue eyes and blonde hair. Not when it's controlled by an organisation. And while we're on the subject, here in Whitby, we are on the verge of having the, one of the world's largest mines um, opening up. Uh, it's uh, to dig polyhalite, which is a form of fertilizer. Now, it's a very interesting name for the company. The company is called Sirius. So that should set alarm bells ringing. And today, through a friend, because I have been so busy I haven't been looking, but through a friend actually said they'd done some research and found that J.P. Morgan owns Sirius. Now, what's interesting here is J.P. Morgan... Why is somebody calling me on Skype? Someone's not listening to our radio show. How naughty is tell that? Them to, tell them to tune into the show. Well, I know. Yeah. Um, J.P. Morgan, Morgan is in, investing in mines. He's the one who's buying gold mines in South America. Uh, he's obviously buying, he's in control of the Sirius mine, and that's interesting because Sirius is going to mine fertilizer. Now, if you control the world's largest production of fertilizer, you have control over food supplies because if you say in a, in a post-apoloptic world that's, that's really down on its knees and you say, well, actually, yes, I'm very happy to sell you the fertilizer to make your plants grow, but it's going to cost you four times what it did yesterday. So what we find is that people with a great deal of money and a connection to dark sides will invest in elements that allow them to manipulate or crowbar humans so it's like i can control you because i hold resource i hold water uh, energy uh, food if you've got that you can actually start dictating to governments and that's what these people do so i was very concerned to learn that jp morgan uh, is the uh, main holder of the world's largest fertilizer mine so let's watch this space and I think we're out of time. Listen, JP, Correct. it's been lovely to speak to you. I want you to have a lovely holiday. I, I want to thank everybody who has supported me. Um, I couldn't do it without your support. And, you know, we, none of us could. Without, without the love, the support and the dedication of everyone out there, none of us, no matter what we do, whether we 
we just heal one person a year or whether we heal 50 people a year. We couldn't do what we do. So it's a partnership. So I've had a week's holiday. Now you go and have a week's holiday. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I'll, I, I'm not going away quite yet, but it'll be uh, just it will be straddling the, uh, the, the time when, when you're on the show. So uh, until next month, Simon, um, have, a, have a great September. Uh, I'll see you on the other side of September, and uh, we'll uh, we'll have some more connection of consciousness. Well, it's my birthday on the seventh. So it is. Oh yes, happy birthday for this week. That's right. Thank you. Good night, Simon. Good night. Good night.